So I'm here together with Alice Payach. And uh, Alice is the president of uh, one of the finest champagne houses, Bruno Payach. And uh, right now we are actually, we just finished our um, board meeting because together we are in the board of L'Anson BCC. And since we are at the beginning of the harvest season of the grapes before we produce champagne, mm -hmm. Alice proposed me take a look at what is happening exactly. in our place. It's about being at the right place at the right time. Exactly. So thank you, Michaela, for being here. It's so a pleasure to have you. We, we see here the, the grapes. They come just from the, from the vineyard. Absolutely. They come from Côte des Blancs. We just started harvest two days earlier. They have now the beautiful um, white fruit flavors. And at the same time, a slight acidity that is mm -hmm. what we need. Yeah. Uh, but the les, les pépins now absolutely mature. They are not yeah. green or vegetal anymore. Yeah. So we can feel now is the time to go. And actually, um, you just said this year. Is it a good year? How, how can you tell mm -hmm. that it's maybe something very special? Might we have some millisim? <laughs> <laughs> it ain't over until it's over. Okay. <laughs> for the whites, for sure, we're very, very um, we have a lot of trust in the maturity, um, the finesse, and mm -hmm. the energy in the grapes. And for the black grapes, which are Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier, uh, at, at Maison Bruno Payard, we will be starting uh, Sunday, Monday, and all the rest of next mm -hmm. week. And the weather forecast is going to change. Okay. We are we'll announced see. some rains <laughs> on us from Tuesday. So, mm. uh, as we say in, in en Champagne, we say, tant que les vignes coucheront dehors, as long as the vineyards <laughs> sleep outside, there is only so much we can predict. Yeah. So we will be wise and wait for the harvest to be full inside the cellar before mm. we make any any predictions. Exactly. <laughs> Don't forget that Champagne is a white wine, predominantly produced by one white grape and two black grapes and the color of the juice lies in the skin of the grape so mm -hmm. it is very important that the grape remains absolutely perfect until the last moment where it is crushed mm. um, and that's why if you look precisely at these cases you see that they have they have holes in there because if by chance there is any self pressing of the grape we accept to lose that juice. We'd mm. rather lose it mm -hmm. than have it tinted or damaged by a maceration in the box. Yeah. Um, and after that, the, the pressing will be very delicate. It's very important. It has to be very progressive because there are different pressings in the life of one berry of grape. Uh, we think this is one fruit, but in reality, this is dozens of fruit. Every single grain is one fruit. This is beautiful. If you mm. visit a vineyard during flower time, mid of June, you will see one fruit for each grain of grapes. Mm. And that's how we think of it. When it is crushed, the first part of the crushing will obviously be the purest. And the second one will start crushing the seeds and the skin and will be a little softer, a little more tannic. A little different and the third one is obviously not eligible for champagne mm. but so pressing is key and the goal is to have a slow pressing mm -hmm. but the goal also is to reduce as much as one can the time between the moment the grape is cut mm -hmm. and the moment it is crushed mm. and that's why there is a kind of constant excitement during harvest with yeah. this acceleration right after the grape is out of the parcel until the time it is out of the of the press. My role here is to make sure we have the right priority because we have to make choices in short timings. Yeah. Because sometimes one priority for one team can be a different priority for another one. Yeah. So we need to have the priority very clear and then good communication, uh, of course. And uh, and then, you know, mm -hmm. it's very easy at the beginning because everybody is, is in good shape. Mm -hmm. But as, as days pass and less sleep and more action, mm -hmm. It's making sure the high spirit stays on. Yeah. Of course, you need to be very organized. So you organize things, and you organize the work and the tasks, but the sky is changing every day. So you need to be also very flexible. And that is where uh, voilà, we need agility because there is what we have planned. And then there is what the evolution is going to be in the vineyard. And the vineyards give us 
the direction. Mm -hmm. So we have to follow them. So mm -hmm. uh, every year we have to review our plans. That's 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 the principle. And here is uh, basically the waste. What is left over after the pressing? It's vegetal material because you can see la rafle. You can see it's made of the skin. You can see there are some pepin in there. So all of this has a lot of potential in fact. Um, so we work with a company called Le Rafida, mm -hmm. which is local, who collects them. So from Champagne region? Absolutely. And they collect this, it's about, all about circularity. From this, they will separate what is the seed from the rest. The seed is going to be dried and then from that seed, we'll be, we'll be extracting polyphenols. These polyphenols can be used uh, in uh, cosmetics mm -hmm. as a uh, principe active. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there are several creams actually that voilà. use grapes as an ingredient. They can be used as well as nutrients. And there are many things that can be used that I think but that are still under research. Mm. It's, a, it's a very innovative project that requires also a lot of research and mm -hmm. a lot of time. We crush uh, three times, but there are still some juice in there. Mm -hmm. So what remains, a part of it will be distilled uh, as an alcohol from Mar de Champagne. Oh. And the remaining part of it, very dry, mm -hmm. will be transformed as a compost, which oh. will be used in the fields later. In the in the champagne exactly. fields, actually, Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. in order to yeah. get a better soil. And Absolutely, uh, mm -hmm. generally not alone. Combined with basalt or also organic amendments coming from animals or other elements, mm -hmm. but all together they will be brought back to the ground. That so is, uh, perfect example of circularity instead of wasting it or throwing it away or not using it again. Yes. Did you ever taste the grape juice when it was just freshly pressed, coming from the grapes, from the vineyards? Mm -hmm. Here that's, it is. Here it is. <laughs> that's, uh, it's 20 past four now. That's, uh, that was started crushing at three. Uh, that was probably harvested around noon or one. And mm -hmm. then by the time it gets here, and it is crushed, and here is the juice. Wow! Just outside the press, the color may se seem strange. It's a combined yes. color and uh, oxidation, mm. and the color will evolve again in the process of the wine making. Voilà. So now let's taste. Cheers! Mm -hmm. Cheers to the must. <laughs> mm. Sweet. A yes. lot of nice long structure in the middle. Mm. Nice mouth watering. Light sensation of acidity, mm. but yes, very, very sweet. Yeah, you feel that the maturity is absolutely here. It mm. was the right time to pick these grapes. This is going to be champagne in the future, at least in for, how many years? For Champagne Bruno Payard, it will be between four and five years from now, minimum. Okay, see, so mm. now they are going to go into the barrels, yeah, they are going to sleep and work. Mm. Oxygen is going to be part, of the, part of the creation, mm -hmm. and then. We can say something. <laughs> so Alice, what are you noting here? Every grapes arriving is obviously uh, trashed and written and we know exactly where it comes from and how it's crushed. And so we have to follow the same traceability for the must then. Mm -hmm. So after the pressing and the decanting, the must arrive here in the barrels. So the very, very fresh juice, exactly. which we just tasted, which is delicious, mm -hmm. is going to be filled and here into these barrels. It's one year of work in the vineyard that now, at last, we are relieved about because it is here. It is not under the sky anymore. It is in the cuvry. And we in can... security. Exactly. <laughs> well, it will still be full of surprises, but we can taste it every single day. And of course, we have to know it by its name yeah. and follow it through where it comes from. Voila, through the autumn and the winter, it will go through its first fermentation, and then only after the spring starts, we will taste it again 
and understand its individuality and see where it belongs mm. in our various QAs. To see the character, mm -hmm. to also see the quality level. Absolutely. Is this when you will be able to decide, how, is that maybe going to be a millisim? It is at that moment that at, this, at this moment. Yeah. Mm. Until now, all we have are intuitions. And of course, we have to listen to these intuitions, but mm -hmm. you, we also have to challenge these intuitions. Yeah, sure. So we have to stay uh, careful. Here is a very important moment as well. Mm. I'm a going to follow you. <laughs> Nutrition. So here is happening a, a very important moment in the production of champagne. Where Maybe at least you can explain what is, is happening. The moment where the nutriment for fermentation will be brought together with the must and progressively this way the first fermentation will be able to start with yeast uh, that are melted with the must and added in the right proportion into each barrel. So this is when the bacteria start yes. the, working. That, Exactly. And transforming the juice into alcohol. <laughs> exactly. Getting bubbles and adding freshness, no? Uh, yeah, get, creating CO2, which is not uh, yet... This, at this stage, the CO2 is not yet going to translate into bubbles because the CO2 is going to escape in this large room. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we do that again, next year with the same wine in the bottle instead of doing it in the barrel, mm -hmm. that time, that second time, the CO2 won't be able to escape and that is when it will uh, dissolve into the wine as the effervescence forming the bubbles. So, um, Alice, so I wish you and your teams all the best for the next two weeks to come, right? Because this Thank is crucial you. so that everything is going to be happening as planned as plan A <laughs> but I know you also have plan B and this is very exactly. important because in a profession where you have so many different influences mm -hmm. the weather mm -hmm. people and the juice and everything that comes from nature you never know exactly we work some things that's alive so right. you need to consent mm -hmm. or to agree to this yeah. fact of uh, yeah. uh, living changes it, it sounds or is seems so simple when you have a bottle of champagne you open it and drink it with your friends for a celebration, but the hard work that is behind it, it's immense. So you just got a little idea of what it means to work <laughs> in the champagne business. And now you also understand why this is luxury.